Today on Tin Man's Garage, <laughs> we're gonna go through and just make a basic patch panel uh, out of some 18 gauge steel. Now here is the panel that I cut out, the little piece that I cut out. Uh, I knew it was going to be full of lead and that is the main reason why I cut it out. Uh, I didn't know how much was there and it needed some work. So I just cut it out and I'm just going to make a new one. Now typically you want to use cold rolled steel, which is what I have right here. This is 18 gauge. Uh, you can measure this with a caliper or uh, one of those gauge, little square gauge things. Here is some hot roll. Now this is another option that you can use, but it's not preferred because it's got this scale on it. So you can see just by comparing the two here, cold roll and hot roll. So uh, I'm gonna lay this out, just cut it out, and uh, throw on some offset beads using my Mittler Bros bead roller, and I'll show you guys basically how to do it. Yee! So this here is the exact piece that I cut out using just a simple 16th inch air grinder, cutoff wheel, whatever the hell you want to call it. Now what you're going to want to do here, here it's going to need, see I left about a 3 8 to a half inch flange where this before this bends. Now what you're going to want to do to get this panel to sit flush and inset is actually put an offset on each little side here so it'll sit in there and then you can have a little bit of a gap to weld. Um, I'll show you what I mean, but anyways, throwing it on a piece of 18 gauge, then I can trace around the size of this actual panel with just a Sharpie, and then add 3 8 to a half an inch around it to allow for the flanges before I actually cut it down. Now if you look at this piece here that I cut out, you can see it has a little bit of a curve to it. Well, if this curve was more extreme, I would try to take that into account and add some material on the length here because when you squeeze it up or when you bend it, it's actually going to get slightly shorter, uh, your new piece. So um, in an extreme situation, you might want to take and bend your metal to the exact radius that you need and then trace your panel, but in this situation it's just fine. Uh, if anything, I'll just cut on the outside of the lines to make it slightly longer. Another thing here, take some half inch masking tape and you can take it, lay it out along this line here and then trace around that. So that will be your actual cutout size or what I usually do is I just freehand it. This side here I'm actually gonna bend a 90 degree flange on last. So that's why that side here is gonna be a little bit different. So I'm just gonna cut this straight and I can continue this. You get the point. So I have this very crude laid out piece here. Just gonna take it over to my Beverly shear and cut it out real quick. There's a rough cutout shape. Now it's time to clean up the edges so it's not sharp and then I can bead roll the offsets. Now this part here is just a matter of preference. Here I have my roller, it's a sheet metal roller. Uh, it's basically used to give sheet metal a very slight radius or up to a, a building a circle. Um, anyways, I'm gonna run this through this roller before I do the bead rolling, uh, get it approximately to shape. Now when you do a bead roll, it's gonna end up deforming this panel a little bit. Uh, there's no way of getting around it, but if you get it into the close approximate shape to start with, it should stay pretty close. Now again, this piece here has some radius to it. It's not crazy, so this step could probably be skipped, but I'm gonna do it anyways. Oh, sunflower seed in the beard. <laughs> no extra charge. Rolling through one way. Then I'll take it and flip it and roll it through the other way. And that makes sure that if this roller is at all set tighter on one side versus the other, it won't roll it into weird shapes. So a little bit of time, half turn on the tightening here. If anything, the bead rolling is gonna to wanna to flatten the panel, usually. So that there will be more than enough. But again, if you don't have one of these, it's not the end of the world. As mentioned, this panel is cut out big intentionally. So you can see here, that I have it big so I can do these flanges. Now when I do these flanges, obviously I'm gonna want the metal to be flat on the outside here. So the flange is really only gonna be offset the thickness of this metal, which is probably 16 or 18 gauge from the factory. So I'm gonna have to make sure that I have my offset die facing the right direction so that this edge here gets flanged down. Again, I want the panel to be up from the flange so the flange tucks behind this and the rest of the panel is flat up with here. So I'm gonna take this over to my Mitla Bros bead roller. And here is the quarter inch soft offset die. Uh, these are made of a Delrin material, basically a hard plastic. Uh, and you can see here, if I run it through this way, I have my panel marked on the correct way, on the correct side, because it's going to push this end of the panel down. So all I have to do is clamp it in there and roll it. 
There's contact. So I'm gonna go one turn. Probably go two turns on this. I guess we'll see how it looks. Start running it through. Follow the edge of the line. Now one thing that's good and bad about this machine, it tends to want to pull straight. It makes turning a little bit of radius sometimes a little bit more difficult. Uh, this here is two turns down, it doesn't have enough offset, so I'm going to go one more turn and run it through again. It's close, but not quite. So here are the rough offset edges so you can see. Now in some places there's a little bit of distortion on this panel just because of the way it's laid out. Um, and this panel is actually a little bit too narrow, but it was just a piece of scrap I used. So in these corners here, or in this corner specifically, all I'm going to do is take a hammer on a flat piece of steel and uh, clean that, straighten that back out. Now I did that in these corners as well. You can see where it's double offset. I just kind of straightened them out a little bit. Again, this is nothing too intricate, so it's no big deal. Now here's the back side of this panel. Now before I make my final 90 degree bend, what I'm going to do, set this panel inside here. You can see it obviously lines up nicely with the uh, offsets. It's not that set in there, and I know it's going to fit. I can draw this line here on this side because this is the side that's going to have to be bent for the 90 degree. So I just trace this, and then I can bend that 90 degree. Now notice this panel does still have a little bit too much curve to it, but when I bend that straight 90 degree, it's actually going to straighten it back out. Here I have the 90 degree bend laid out, and I have my brake here. Now if you don't have a brake, which a lot of people won't, you can use a vise or a stair or really anything with a 90 degree bend and just hammer it over, but this will give you the nicest finished product here. Now you can see that when I put this in, it's curved like I said, but when you bend it, it's going to straighten out, so that's something to keep in mind. So just clamp this down where it needs to be, and if anything, you want this piece here to be a little bit shorter, so I'm going to go so my, you, you can't see my line right there, clamp it down. Now I can bend my 90. So I start off eyeballing it, needs a little bit more, and I can take it out and use just a standard square to compare it. Here's this piece. If you look at it, you can probably see that it's under bent, so it needs to be bent more, just slightly, a couple degrees, or a degree maybe. As I mentioned, once you bend this piece, it's going to be back close to straight. Well, what you're going to have to do is shrink this flange here so it in turn sucks it in tighter and gives you that radius back. So I have a uh, shrinker here that I ordered from Mittler Bros. Just threw it on the end of my shear arm. So I have the shrinker here, stretcher there. Uh, for this process, I'm only going to use the shrinker. So I gave this a few slight bumps on the shrinker. Basically probably about 12 of them, just very slight. Uh, gives it a nice clean radius. I'm gonna take it over to the car here, throw it out in this door gap. Then I can check the radius on here against this door. Now it's pretty close. You can see the ends need just a little bit more. So I'm gonna give them a little bit more of a shrink and that'll be pretty much dead on the nuts. I have this piece here now, all I have to do is basically sort of trim to fit. So if I slide it in there and I notice a couple spots where it needs to get a little bit trimmed off, I'll just take it over to Beverly and trim off around this outside lip. Now this outside lip isn't that important. All it is is basically a backer for your weld so you don't have to hold it and do a butt weld, which is hard to do on sheet metal. So if there you gotta cut off half of it, it's no big deal. It's easier to trim to fit than... You can see I got that panel in there and I got this gapped pretty decent. Uh, I need to grind a little bit off the door here. You can see we actually added a piece on the back, but it needs to be ground down. I haven't ground that yet. So this right here is the patch, and what I basically do is I went from the inside. Uh, I did this by myself, which is kind of a pain in the ass, but I reached through the window with the long screwdriver, this screwdriver here, reached through the window, down and around, and then I held the MIG gun in my hand, which is holding the camera and I pushed it out and worked my way from one corner, pushing down and then moving the screwdriver, tack, 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 tack. So I got equally spaced, or fairly equally spaced tacks. And then what I do is I go and I fill in a little half inch section at a time with the weld, then air dry it fast with the air nozzle, or air cool it fast, I should say. That way the heat doesn't spread around. Uh, this usually never looks good, but it's more important that you don't let the heat travel around. You can see that the heat path stops pretty close to your, pretty close to the weld. This is all gonna be ground down anyway, so it doesn't really matter what it looks like. Most important thing, not warping that panel. Lines up really good with the door here. And the rest of it flows pretty nicely. 